Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com and today we're going to be looking at lesson number two in our in-game study and it's going to be on triangulation and so many chess games are won or lost on triangulation I feel like it's very important to not only talk about what it is but go over some examples so you know exactly how it's played and what triangulation is, is a position in a chess game where if it's your opponent's move you will have a completely winning position but it's your position it's your turn so what you need to do is use triangulation, meaning you're going to make a triangle with your king's movements so that you reach the exact same position or similar and it's your opponent's move. And so that's what we're going to look at today. If you take a look at this example here, the, uh, the white king would like to come to e3 and the black king would like to come to e5. Those are going to be the critical squares. From there, the kings can pretty much control the center and then gobble up all your opponent's pawns. But in this case, it's white's move. And if white tries to capture this e3 square, the black king can come to e5. And right now, it's white's move in this position. And there's nothing good that white can do. He can't come to d3 and he can't come to f3. So he's going to be pushed back. And once he does, the black king can come to either d4 or f4, gobble up our pawns, and march his pawns down and promote to a king. So we want to reach this exact same position, but we want it to be black's move. Because if we take a look at it in this same spot from the very beginning, if it's black's move, black has nowhere to move at the beginning. He can't use triangulation because if he moves away, we can come to e3 and he can't get back to his pawn fast enough before we control the center. He can't use triangulation. His only move is to come to e5. And if he comes to e5 and we come to e3, now we have the same position, but it's black's move. And if you look at the black king, he can't go anywhere. He can't come to d5. He can't come to e6. He's going to be forced back to d6. And now our king can come to e4, capture, and the black king is going to be further pushed back. And we can continue to march our pawns up and have complete domination in this game. It's going to be a very easy win from white. So what we need to do from the very beginning is we need to have this position, but we need it to be black's move. So what we need to do, if it is our move, is we need to use triangulation. And we do that by first not taking the square that we want, e3. We first need to make a triangle. And you can come to d2 or f2. I'm going to move to f2. doesn't really matter. They're both going to make a triangle. And we're going to come to f2 and then try to come to e3. And we'll take a look at two things that black can do. We already take we already saw that if his king comes to e5 right away, trying to control the center, then our king can come to e3 and we have this exact same position as before but as we saw before it's now black's move and as we talked about the black king has no good moves he's gonna have to come back to d6 and once he does once we capture it's going to be an easy game for white but if we take a look at the same example black does have another option it's very important to look at if the if the pawn comes to e3 a lot of players if black looks at this and really analyzes and realizes that his king on e5 is a mistake. So he may try a move like e3. And from here, it would actually be a mistake for white to capture on e3. Even though black is now down in material, his king can now come to e5. And if you look at it, although white's up in material by one pawn, we have the same position, but now it's white's turn. And as we talked about, this is going to be bad for white. White has no way of pushing this black king up the board. Black now has the initiative, and White's going to lose this game. So as we see, it would be bad. We really want this position, regardless of that pawn, for it to be Black's move. So in this case, it would actually be better for White to bring his king to f3. Now if the pawn continues to push up the board, then we can capture. And now if the Black king comes to e5, now we can come to e3, and now it's black's move. So we really want this position, like we talked about from the very beginning, but we want it to be black's move. And that's how we use triangulation. We want to create a triangle in our movements so that we reach the exact same position, but it's your opponent's move. So we're going to take a look at a few more examples of how you can use triangulation in a game. Let's go ahead and take a look at this example. And if it's white's move, Black's going to have a completely dominant and winning game. The white rook cannot move to b1, or the pawn can 
keep continue to come down the board to b2 and we have the same position. In the same case, this pawn on g3 can't come to g4 because the black pawn can then just take it on g4 and black's going to have an easy win. In the same way, if the white king moves away from this f3 square, this black king can come to the g4 square and have a completely dominant position. Depending on where the king is, black can then push his pawn to f4 and then after the trade the black king can take this pawn on e5 or if the king is let's say on e3 then the black king can just take on g3 and we'll take what that looks like here in a minute but if it's white's move black's gonna have an easy game but it's black's move so black has to use triangulation to move to the same position except now it's going to be white's turn and so he's going to do that by first playing h5 he can't come to f6 because this pawn is here and from here white has a decision to make and there's really nothing white can do he can't move his pawn up to this fourth rank because of this rook here and he doesn't want to move his king right away and we already talked about he can't move his pawn up so he's going to bring his rook over to h2 he's going to try to check our king and make our king move our king's going to just move back to g6 and from here the rook's going to have to bring his rook back to b2 if it doesn't then black can just bring his pawn all the way down the board it's protected by this rook on b4 and he's going to get a queen white's going to have to trade off his rook and he's going to be down a rook so white's going to have to bring back his rook to b2 and from here black can play king to g5 and as we can see we have the exact same position but now it's white's move and it doesn't matter white moves if he brings his king to f2 g2 or even e3 they're all going to be bad because now the black king can come like we talked about to g4 the critical square and from here black's next move is going to be f4 or depending on where the king is if the king moves let's say to e3 we already talked about the king can now just take on g3 and it's going to be a fairly easy win for black the king can then march up the board, take this pawn on e5, and he's going to have pass pawns, and he's going to have a fairly easy win once he promotes to a queen. So as you can see in this example, we used our king, the white king didn't move around, but we still reached the exact same position, except it was our opponent's turn, and so we gained the advantage. So let's take a look at one more example in triangulation to make sure that you completely understand how it works. Let's take a look at our last position and see if you can find the triangulation from white. Now hopefully you found it, but so many people in this position, they have a completely winning end game, but they'll try to force the issue. If it's black's move, white's going to have a fairly easy win, but if it's white's move, so many times you'll see a move, white will play pawn to c6, trying to force the issue, but from here, black can come to c8 with his, pawn, with his king, and this is going to be a drawn game we can play it out but so many times white will waste an opportunity to win because he doesn't look at it and this from the starting position white really needs to use triangulation so he can get the same position but it's black's move and we can do that by first playing king to e5 now from here if the king comes to let's say c6 we can now bring our king to d4 his king can't come to b5 because then we can bring our king up to d5 and basically lock off his king he can't come back to c6 so once his king can't come to c7 once he comes back to d7 now our king is going to come to d5 and we have the same position except now it's black's move and now once black brings his king to c8 then we can easily bring our king up the board and force an easy checkmate so as you can see here if we can force your opponent in different situations if they have no good moves if we can force them to have the move instead of us using triangulation this is going to be very good and always look out for this in your game if you see your opponent doesn't have a good move watch out and see if you can create it to be his move so hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you haven't already please subscribe i got a lot of great lessons for the end game coming up hope you guys enjoy and i'll see you guys next video thanks for watching